Hey guys, it's Chris with Better Editor, and today we are going to skip the tutorials and do a little bit of show and tell. I've had a couple of people ask me about my personal computer setup, so we're going to take a deep dive into what I call a good editing system. So off the bat, let's look at the workhorse running this setup. It's a custom build from Puget Systems. If you're in the PC market, you have to check these guys out. This thing is two years old and still chews through AK content like nobody's business. Next up are the RAIDs. On top is my media RAID. It's a 48 terabyte G-Speed shuttle in RAID 10. And on the bottom is a 16 terabyte Promise Pegasus R4 in RAID 6 that I use for cold storage before I dump things to LTO. So, you might be wondering what the deal is with all the hard drives. Well, I like to keep my project files and my media files and all of my archive files and all of my scratch disk files all separated. And there's a reason for that. And I take a deep dive into that reason in my new course, Advanced Workflows. Check out the link in the description for more. Now, running that amount of storage on high-end projects, you don't ever want to lose something due to a power surge or a power outage. And this APC battery and surge protector is my machine's guardian angel. I really recommend you pick one of these up because you never know when the unexpected is going to happen. Now for monitors, I'm rocking two 27 inch BenQ PD series monitors. They look crisp and they have lots of real estate. And above them is the 43 inch Samsung QLED HDR reference monitor. So this thing, it's not there just to look cool. I keep the monitor up so that whenever I have clients over, they can actually view my edit in real time as I'm working. They can give me notes, they can give me feedback. It's very helpful. But one of the other things that it's useful for is it's color calibrated so that whenever I do any color correction, I know that the colors that I'm putting on that monitor are correct, they are true, and that's gonna be how the final result of my video is gonna look to the end user. On the peripheral side of things, I could not live without my Wacom tablet. I find it's a lot faster than a mouse and it's more intuitive while working in After Effects or Photoshop. Now, it was a struggle to learn at first, but it was worth the effort. Then there's the keyboard. Nothing to see here. I like the low profile though because it lets my fingers glide across the keys whenever I'm editing. And then following that is the iPad mini running Touch Portal. Watch for a video of this gem of a tool coming up soon. Rounding out the inputs is the Tangent Ripple. When throwing down a color grade, the speed this adds over a tablet or a mouse is undeniable. And for speakers, I use a pair of Mackie CR3 studio monitors. They're easy on the budget and sweet on the ears. All right, now there are those times when you need to just throw on a pair of headphones and studio monitors aren't gonna do the trick. When that's the case, you need to reach for a good pair of headphones. And I'm not talking about the AirPods Max. I'm not talking about a pair of Beats. I'm talking about these sexy things made by Sony. They're the MDR7506, and you can find them in post houses across the nation. These things are a staple in the industry. And the best part is, they're pretty cheap. So that does it for my main machine. But you know, sometimes you just need a Mac for Mac things. And that's why this little guy is tucked under my desk. And last up, the work never stops. So this MSI Creators laptop is a champ for remote work, handling 4K, and it can even manage 8K if the circumstances are right. And we're going to wrap with that. I hope you enjoyed getting to see what I use on a daily basis to work professionally as a video editor. If you want to know more about why I put together my system the way that I did, take a look at Advanced Workflows, where I spend an entire lesson in the 12-part course on how to set up a video editor's computer and why you do it the way you do it. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, or if you just want some more tips and tutorials, click the subscribe button and also drop me a line in the comments. Let me know some things that you want to see, things that you want to learn. We'll see you next time.